I just want to say about getting a certificate, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to get these certificates. It takes a lot to get this letter of awards. It takes time to come out to practice and do the things you're supposed to do to get these awards. I'm proud of you. So for offense, I'd like to present the JV Offense of MVP to Chris Evans. Uh, 
now the varsity schedule is already complete. The JV schedule is we're working on it, but I can go ahead and give you a little update. If Clewiston has a uh, JV team, then we will play them twice, and we have Sebastian River twice already. So we've got two and away for, for each one of those right. So we got four games, so, uh, in, you know, almost on the check mark on that. Uh, now we're going to start off with the uh, awards that we're going to start with the people that are on the bar sheet, the players. And we're going to begin with uh, the coaches award. This comes from me. This is uh, players that uh, that I've had to, uh, a relationship with, I've had to deal with. There was moments there where there were ups and downs and, um, you know, we just uh, had conversations. But they did everything I asked them to do. I mean, whether it was offense or defense. Or the, uh, you know, if I ask them to play another spot or another position, or I ask them to do something extra, and they just went above and beyond what I asked them to do. And that didn't go without some strife, you know, without some uh, character building, and it didn't uh, go without, you know, having, uh, you know, some confrontation. But that's part of uh, being a head coach, and that's part of building relationships with kids. And sometimes I was loved, and sometimes they were loved, and sometimes we were mad at each other, but we got through it. And that's what this is all about, is, you know, trying to build that. So. I've got some awards here that I'm going to hand out. These are my personal coaches award. And I'm going to start off with uh, Casey Terrell. Come on up here. <laughs> Casey Terrell, you know, he's the kind of guy that doesn't always get recognized, but I see him every day, came here every day, did what I asked him to do. And, uh, you know, always did and always respectful. And I appreciate it, Casey. Thank you. Yeah. This next uh, gentleman, uh, we definitely had our rounds, um, and uh, we asked him to play a spot that he normally you know, wasn't used to playing outside, you know, on the edge on defense, uh, playing defensive end for us. But you know, he's a big, strong kid, and uh, I think he's got a future in football if he wants it. And uh, you know, I've had some great conversations with him, and then we've gotten mad at each other. But you know, all, all, when it's all said and done, this is how much I appreciate you, Josiah Stamper. Come on up. You know, he's a, he's a big kid. He, he's one of the most quietest kids I've, I've ever seen or I've been around. He lets his actions do his talking. Very respectful in the classroom and in the hallways. Uh, out of all this, I really didn't have too much confrontation with him. But, uh, you know, he always did everything I asked him to do, whether it was on special teams, whether we had, we had to use him on a, a different area on defense. And uh, I think he's got a future in football, too. Rondre Morgan, come on up. Next person uh, was a good player for us. Special teams, offense, defense, whenever we needed him. Uh, he's always been respectful to me. Love his parents. They're always on top of him, making sure he's doing the right thing and we can't ask for anything. All my parents are like that, but I've gotten to know them too. And I think he's got a future in college football and he's got another year with us and he's gonna do a lot of things for us and I'm very proud. Come on up, Nemo Bryant. Their, their plaques are being made. I went up there to the plaque place where I got them at. They didn't quite have them done, but I got to recognize them. We had two players this year make all district. Despite our record, I was very proud of that. I had to fight hard for it, but it was really easy for one of them. And he's standing here today. And uh, he led the conference in punting this year. He had a 39.78 average, and he almost had 1,000 yards in punting. If we would have had a game in a month and a half because of the weather and the hurricane and everything, then uh, he, you know he probably would have made an all-state punter. I'm very, very proud of him. He's an all-district football player. Leo, stand up for us, please. <laughs> Leo, I don't have your award, but it's coming, son. All right? So I appreciate it. Give me a hug. You're all district. Uh, 
Uh, Troy Young is the other one. He led the entire uh, district in tackling. Uh, you know, when we were going through this stuff, and I had to put these guys' names up, everybody that I've called up here so far, that I put their name in that pool. Now, you got to understand something about Okeechobee. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, so it's like what some people think. And then we play these teams in the Treasure Coast. We can't match up with their yardage and all that stuff. But your head coach put their in the name, and a lot of them were impressed by it. Uh, there was no way getting around Troy Young. He led the, he led the entire uh, Treasure Coast in tackling. He didn't lead us in interceptions or anything like that. He just does what a linebacker was supposed to do, make tackles, tackles for losses, and hits you real hard. And he's our all-district uh, linebacker. So if he's not here, we all give him a round of applause. <laughs> and then Mike Mercarelli, he was not here with us today. He is in an all-star game right now. So that he is up there representing us in an all-star game. This is his second one. We're hoping that you know he gets invited to a couple more along with the rest of these seniors. And uh, we're just hoping for the best for their future and whatever I can do to help them. And if you guys got anything you want to reach out to them, you let them know because uh, we want those kids to be successful, each and every one of them. And you know I worry about their future every day. So, And then uh, there's one more that's not here today. I want to recognize him. Devin Lewis is not here today. He is also going to be getting a plaque as well for a, a coach's plaque and a coach's award. And we're very proud of him as well. He did everything I asked him to do, whether it was on the, being a tight end, whether it was playing a little bit on the special teams, or you know, just you know, coming up and saying, Coach, I can get this done if you let me do it. It's built that trust, and I was really, really proud of him. And he's definitely got a future in football if he wants it as well. So let's give him a round of applause, too. Okay, this right here is going to be uh, handed out by uh, Coach, I'm going to talk about it, but it's going to be handed out by Coach Kerry Maggard. Kerry Maggard was our uh, offensive and defensive line coach, and I have two awards, and the first one we're going to give out is the defensive award. This award goes out to our most valuable defensive line. Now, this young man is uh, uh, has quite the character, and uh, there are days when he makes me mad, and there are days when he made me laugh, and there are days when he made me cry. But I was so glad to see him every day. He was a vital part of what we needed down around the defensive line. And when we asked him to do something, he did it. And uh, we would like to present uh, Kate and Reno for the most valuable defensive line. quite the character. Uh, he makes you smile. Uh, he's funny. He's also a little sneaky. And uh, we love him though. And I'll tell you what, he's kind of like an old guy because he's been on the football team for quite a long time. Kind of like Berger and the rest of them. He's been an old veteran. And uh, he did everything we asked him to do. Probably a, a just did a really good job for us on the offensive line. And it was, it was hands down on this, not with just the experience, but the mental toughness. Even on defense, we had to help out on defense and do that. He nagged us, basically, you know, and we had, to, you know, we had to follow through with it. But, you know, he's an absolute joy to coach, just like uh, Reno was. So we want Connor Mir to come on up here. And say <laughs> This year, and you know, I had a kickoff special. I had a guy that could literally kick a ball 45 feet in the air and drop it 10 yards. And he got so good at it, they wouldn't allow us to do it anymore. But this kid has got a lot of talent, and this kid could probably, uh, if he wants to, pursue a career in kicking in, in, in college because he can drop a ball where you want him to in a special zone. So I'm going to go with uh, Alejandro Liberato for the award here. <laughs> Uh, the next person is a, a guy that was our, our field goal kicker. He never missed a field goal. 
He was perfect. Uh, that's, that's not easy to say. I always say that practice isn't perfect, it's permanent. Uh, he was perfect, and uh, a couple times, you know, I'm very leery about putting kickers out there to begin with, but, you know, I, I didn't really too much worry about it uh, when he was up there doing his PATs and stuff like that. And I will say he's not here today, but, uh, we were, you know, there's another kid that could probably be a field goal kicker in college if he wants to. Uh, we're talking about Connor Rucks. He's not here today, but let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to let uh, Coach uh, uh, Mike Warren do the offensive players. All right. Um, unfortunately, both these kids aren't here, but we had an offensive MVP and a most improved offense. Um, when this person who became most improved first came out as a ninth grader for Coach Whitlock and myself, he, he would have very wide eyes and would always apologize. Uh, if something went wrong, I'm oh, sorry, sir, I'm sorry, sir. And he would say it probably, I, 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 got, I got a recording in my head of him saying I'm sorry to us so many times. And I wasn't sure that this was the game for him, but he kept plugging away. And that is Adam Moore, so please give me a hand. Just want to thank the Academy for having me. The MVP for offensive player, um, I got a chance to coach him his entire time here, both, and I can't say enough about him. Right now he's at an all-star game. He and I working together as me being the offensive coordinator and him being the quarterback, we were able to talk about things. And sometimes we'd even just draw things up on the fly. That's the kind of mind he had. Um, I know that if he gets the opportunity in college that he's gonna be successful. And I, I hope all of you all agree that uh, this year he was the MVP on offense, that's my goal. So, go ahead and turn it over to the defensive awards to Coach Whitlock. Can you hear me? I, I, I don't need a microphone. I, I don't like them. Um, it has been. There are three great things I've done in my life. I married my wife, I have my big family, and I've been a coach at Okeechobee High School where I grew up and played football. Those are the three great things I've done in my life. Um, getting to work with these young men has been an honor and a joy. Speaking about this football team, not just these two specific young men. They have fought through many, many adversities. Um, I can't imagine and I can't think of a, a group of seniors that have been through so much. They deserve your applause for fighting their whole way through and never quitting. Football is about teaching our children to not stopping when things get hard. To not quit when things don't look good. These seniors got that, and they never quit, the ones that are still here. If that says anything about your child, it says that they're going to grow up to be an awesome man someday. They may lose their way here and there, but they're going to be great young men. Um, the first young man I'm going to talk about is a great young man. And for those of you who have been at MOD with me, We've had this discussion about breaking the cycle, right? And being a great influence to your sons, being there for your sons. Young men without fathers, they struggle. This young man has a great father who's been a great influence on his life, which has made him a great young man. And I have no doubt in my mind that he is gonna be a great father when the time comes for him to be a father. He is a great athlete. He looks every bit the part of a Division I athlete, and I honestly believe under the right circumstances he will get to do that. But when he started playing football for us, he's what we call a cerebral football player, cerebral. He thinks about everything so much that he doesn't react and play fast. He can see it. He knows what's going on, but he just moves so slow because he's thinking about it. And then last year, I don't know, about halfway through the season, he turned the switch off. He stopped thinking and just started playing. 
And oh my good lord, people paid the price. Ron Ray Morgan is a great athlete. He is the most improved athlete on our defense. He is one of the best young men that this program has ever had. I've been here for 12 years and I guarantee you he's one of our best young men. I am proud and honored to give him the award for most improved on defense. This next young man is our defensive MVP. If any of you have been married for any amount of time, you know what a love-hate relationship is. And if you're not laughing as a man, I know who wears the pants in your family. <laughs> anyway, I have a love-hate relationship with this young man. I've kicked him out of practice 10 times in the last two years. He's very, very emotional. But some football players have to be emotional. They have to be violent. Good ones are violent. He's a teddy bear around his friends. He's a teddy bear around the coaches. But if you come to Okeechobee High School football game and you're trying to beat the Brahmins, he gets after it. I talked to some of the other coaches that I've had the privilege of coaching with over the last 12 years and was asking them about other people that I've coached. Does this kid compare to them? And between three head former coaches, we all came to the same agreement over the last two months. This young man is the best linebacker that's been at Okeechobee High School in the last 12 years. Troy Young has gotten the praise that he deserves. All district. He'll get to play college if that's what he chooses. That's what we hope and pray he does. But he has deserved it. He led the district in tackles with three less football games than every other team. He led the entire Treasure Coast with three less tackles or three less games than every team. He led the Treasure Coast in tackles with the smallest defensive line on the Treasure Coast. And I don't say that to not my guys. That is a, that is a badge of honor that they were able to do what they did. But they did it undersized and they did it being scrappy. I wish that Troy Young could be here to enjoy this moment with the rest of his teammates, but Troy Young is the defensive MVP. This next award uh, goes out to, uh, there's no doubt about it, he's got a special place in my heart. Coach Whitlock's got special places in the heart for some of his players. All of my players do. But this one, I've developed a relationship with them. And everything I asked them to do, whether it was on or off the field or in the classroom, uh, you just can't, you can't pay a price for it. And I'm definitely gonna miss him. And I know he's gonna be successful, whatever he does. And uh, it was not, an, uh, wasn't hard to figure out who for this uh, Golden Helmet Award goes to. John Williamson, come on up. every day just like I do everybody else and uh, he's going to be a catalyst for us moving forward and uh, he's going to do some great things for us. Uh, I'm going to let these two guys who got to know him over the years and I wish I, would, I, wish I had 10 more years with all of y'all. Here we go. Um, just a little uh, quick word for you. 
The last two awards that we give out are our two biggest awards. The Golden Helmet Award and this right here, the Brahmin Football Award. And some of you may wonder what the difference between the two is. It's the difference between the two is sphere of influence. What that means is, is we look at both of them, and both of these young men influence their football team. But one of them reached out and influenced around the state. They influenced at the national level, John. He showed the entire United States what it meant to be a Brahmin, okay? Through his uh, national championship wins in the National Science Fair, he represented our entire family, and he did an extremely good job at it. That's what the Golden Helmet's about. It's community service, outreach, being a Brahmin, but on a big stage. The Brahmin Award is a little more personal. That's in the house, that's leadership among your teammates. It is sometimes telling them things they don't want to hear. Maybe sometimes getting a little emotional with your teammates. Telling them not to give up. Telling them to keep fighting. Not to give up yourself and to keep fighting. Every once in a while in your life as a coach, you get blessed. You really get blessed. You get to coach some really great people. You get to be there for some really great young men. This young man is He has a mother and a father and people that love him, and if I could steal him from him, I would. I've, I've been trying. Um, he deserves every bit of these accolades tonight. Karis John started playing for us as a freshman. He played for us until he ripped his finger off, which made me and his mother almost puke. <laughs> Uh, we didn't realize how bad it was until it started flopping around right in front of the uh, paramedic. Through no numerous injuries and dings and things of that nature, he has never stopped. And every time we played a tougher opponent, he played hard. He's done through so through three different offenses. He's never put his head down and he's just kept fighting. Does he get emotional? Every one of you that play with him know he does. Good football players get emotional. It's part of the game. It's just can you control it and direct it. Usually I'm not at a loss for words if you know me. Um, I mean, other than saying the curls get the girls, but I, that's a lot. He <laughs> thinks that's a little different to me. I don't, I don't like kids like that. <laughs> I like kids like he tells me every day. I'm a dog, coach. I'm a dog. Come get your trophy, dog. <laughs> Because, 
You know, he just did everything that was asked of him and above and beyond. He also took a lot of phone calls from him late at night. And I know that his wife got mad at him coming over to the house a couple times, maybe, you know, late at night, but it wasn't, it wasn't in vain, it was for reasons. And he was always there and he's a heck of a coach. And whenever he goes in the future, whatever he has planned, I hope that God blesses him. And if he ever needs anything from me, no matter what time of the day or what time of the week, or any time in his life, I'll be there for him. Uh, I'm going to let some other coaches talk about you, and then I'll hand out the award at the end here. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I've known Coach Whitlock since we're about six years old. <laughs> about six. I was five. He was six. He's a cheater. <laughs> he was strong in everybody. He was fast in everybody. I mean, I know that, but Jeff was a beast. A beast. He still is. <laughs> I wouldn't be here. You got me here, so I just appreciate that, man. And that's, you know, what you're like. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, Jeff and I have coached together for a long time. He and I were the two longest tenured coaches. We did JV together. We did varsity together. We had many late nights together. I taught both of his sons. He's my friend. Not gonna miss him. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> coach Whitlock, on behalf of myself and the coaching staff and the players, we want to present you with this memorable plaque. Years of service, of dedication to the Brahman football program and the Brahman family. Thank you, my friend. Um, being at a loss of words isn't really something that comes naturally to me. Um, I've been coaching, I grew up here. I rode on the bus with some of you when we were kids. Went to high school and graduated with some of you. Was around when you met your wives. My sons played on your football team. Okeechobee is a very tight knit community. And my, my dad always told me that I'm a candles at both end kind of guy. I'm gonna go till I burn myself out. Well, unfortunately, that year was this year. I burnt myself out, ended up in the hospital for a week, and um, was really scared to death. Didn't know if I'd ever see my wife again, um, or my kids. Um, and I knew I needed to take a little break. But I want you to know that being a Brahmin is important. Being a Brahmin is something that will stay with you until the end of time of your life, the end of your life. The man that all of you decide to be is a reflection of every man that's come before you. You get to make your own decisions. You get to decide what man you're gonna be whether you're going to keep rolling that cycle over and over again, or if you're going to break free and be a good man, right? We talked about that all summer. Are we going to be a good friend, a good son, a good husband? And more important than any of that, are we going to be a good father? Because right now, there may be some good fathers in this room, but that is the one thing that Okeechobee is lacking more than anything, is good fathers. Men that are willing to stick it out for their sons. I am so proud. I get to see my sons every day. I want to murder them twice a day, but I get to see them every single day. 
Me and my wife have fought through everything. And I get to spend every day with my children. You get that choice. Rondre, you get that choice. Are you going to be a better man than your father? Worse? The same? If you're the same, that's pretty stinking good. But you can up it and be better because I know that's what he wants. Caden, are you going to be the end of the line of a good Reno? Or are you going to keep going? John, do you learn and grow from the men that came before you? Is one of you good and one of you bad, Brady? I think Brady's going to be the good one myself. <laughs> you get to make those choices. And a lot of those things that you learn come from being a Brahmin. That's why we do MOD. I am not stopping doing MOD. I've already told Coach that the day I resign, I said I will still be here every summer. I will still do MOD. And he'll still be at the games. Don't even let him know. I'll be at the games. And I might be flashing some coverage this from the end zone. Who knows? The new coordinator is probably going to hit. <laughs> but anyway, I love your sons. And what I wanted to do is thank every single one of you before I left and tell you how much it's been an honor for you to let me coach your sons. Some of your sons I've been with for four years now, some for three. For some families, it's been six years because I've gotten the joy of coaching two of their sons. They're good men. I've gotten to coach two turds, best friends and mullets. Got to watch Nemo whisper his way through a whole season. I got to see Santana play two different positions this season. Santana started last season as a cornerback. Came in at spring, fighting weight of a defensive tackle, <laughs> and made his way back to DB. Pretty fun journey. Thank you all. Thank you for one of the highlights of my life. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Coach Whitlock, thank you. One more round of applause for Coach Whitlock. to the end of this uh, just to let you know right now we're in off season football we have more than we've had in quite a long time we've almost got 40 kids out for off season football I'm very very proud of that uh, and that doesn't include the people that are in other sports and I'm going down to the freshman campus uh, starting here in the next week or so and the two junior highs and I'm going to be talking to those those kids too because uh, I've got a good relationship with the uh, you know the Leader leagues, and I'm, I'm going to continue to make our program grow. And I also want to thank some, some the parents. I know it's hard to deal with when it, on all these schedules you got to meet and everything like that. We appreciate you coming today. We appreciate your support uh, on those football games on Friday night and, and during this time when we're not playing football. And I appreciate you having your patience with me because I know I've tried some of your patience, and I understand that as a head coach. I, I, I try to want to please everybody. Believe me, I do. But I can't always do that. But I want you to know that I will try. All right? And that's what I'm here to do is do that to the best of my ability. That being said, I want to thank the coach's wives and their families because God knows what a coach's wife goes through. Because a lot of people don't. All right? And I want to thank my wife and the coach's wives. And I am going to have a radio show one day with Ken Keller where we're going to have the coach's wives on her. They didn't want to do it this year, but one of these days I might have what they call a mandatory. You know, so you never, you never know how that works. But also now, I want to thank my players. They get tired of me too. I get it. I understand that. I want to know, let them know that I love them and I care about them and I'm here for them. And we will continue to grow on that. All right. I thank my players and I, and I appreciate that. And finally, my coaches. I want to tell you something. Everywhere I've ever been in my life, I will say this: you are never successful without having a collaborative effort. These coaches are vital, and they're important to your young men, and they're important to a coaching staff, and I appreciate each and every one of my coaches. And I want to thank you for showing up here today. It means a lot. I know it was a Sunday, and I appreciate that. I'll try to next year, maybe the, you know, the Dolphins will be playing on a, on a Sunday, and, and then we'll do it on a Saturday. You never really have a good day when you're doing banquets. We just try to get them done. And I appreciate y'all coming out, and God bless you, and thank you.
anybody that wants to pick up a plaque for their family or a family and they're welcome.